In this video, I'm going to answer a bunch of the most common questions that I get about burning anthracite coal. So this is the coal burning stove that we use here to heat our cabin in the woods. It's called the Chubby Stove, and I've done a number of other videos about it. And I'm getting a lot of questions in the comments section of those videos, and I try to answer them all, but there's just too many of them for me to get to everyone. So I figured I'd take this opportunity to answer 12 or so of the most common questions that I get about burning anthracite coal and the cost of anthracite and this stove particularly and anthracite stoves in general, that sort of thing. Just before I start though, I should explain why this stove doesn't have a stove pipe on it right now. Obviously we're not actually burning coal at the moment. The heating season hasn't really fully started yet and we have the stove pipe outside for cleaning. So that's why you see what you see. But let's just jump right into the, the questions here and my best answers. The most common question I think I probably get about burning anthracite is, what does it cost? And to answer that, uh, well, the, the first part of the answer is that it depends. It depends on if you're buying your coal from a dealer or if you get dealer status yourself, a dealership status, because you're going to be paying less if you become a dealer versus buying from a dealer. However, most people don't want to become a dealer. So to answer the first part of the question first, what does it cost to buy anthracite from a dealer? It does vary depending on how far you are from the mine where the coal is, is harvested. Uh, but on average with Blashack brand coal, which is mined in Pennsylvania, a really high quality anthracite coal, that's the stuff we use here, burns very well, lots of heat, great quality coal. That's going to run you about $9 to $10 US per bag on average. Now, that is going to vary, as I said, depending on where you are in the country or the continent. But on average, $9 to $10 is a pretty safe bet. If you're really far from you know, where the coal is mined in Pennsylvania and it has to travel a long way to get to you, then I have heard of prices as high as like $13 to $15 per bag. But most dealership prices are in the $9 to $10 range per bag at the time of this video. Now, as far as becoming a dealer yourself, which is actually what, uh, what my dad and I did to get a better deal where we are here in Canada, there's not a lot of coal dealers. Uh, anthracite coal dealers are almost non-existent in Canada. So rather than try to find one of those and you know pay uh, exorbitant shipping costs to get the coal here from them, we decided that we would just more or less become coal dealers here and order our coal to heat both of our homes. We live pretty close together here in the, in the wilderness um, with an entire truckload of coal. So dad and I got an entire transport truckload of coal uh, after becoming certified dealers for Blashack coal specifically. So that allowed us to pay at the time, this was 2021 when we got the load that we're still burning through now, at the time, we paid like $250, uh, I think it was around $250 a ton. So $250 plus shipping, which wasn't cheap to get it from Pennsylvania to Northern Ontario, Canada, um, per ton, and that's uh, 50 bags. There's, the bags are 40 pounds, Blashack anthracite coal comes in 40 pound bags. So you have 50 bags per ton and we paid about 250 plus shipping per ton US. Now, since then, in the years since then, you know, we had the pandemic and everything, so prices of energy and fuel across the board, coal and everything else has gone up. And coal has actually gone up significantly less than a lot of other things, but now if you become a dealer and you get a whole bunch at once and you 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 know put up thousands of dollars up front to save long term, which is what we did, you're going to be looking at 355 US per ton. So it's gone up like a hundred bucks, which isn't great, but like I said, everything's gone up and it's still one of the cheapest heating options around when you crunch all the numbers properly. Anthracite coal, I think will always be one of the most economical ways to heat. Apart from maybe natural gas, I think it is the cheapest aside from that one other 
probably cheaper option of natural gas, which in this part of the world where we are, it's not even an option. There's no natural gas hookup facilities here where we live. So anthracite makes a lot of economical sense for us, and I think it probably will for you too, even if you go with a dealer, which is obviously what most people do, rather than becoming a dealer and putting up, you know, eight or ten thousand dollars up front or more. Uh, even getting from a dealer at nine to ten dollars per bag on average is still way cheaper than a lot of other heating fuels. So that was kind of a, a long-winded answer for cost, but there's actually more to talk about when it comes to cost because a lot of people have asked me, um, you know, what does it cost me personally per winter to heat this place, to heat our cabin in the woods? So to answer that, first of all, I'll, I'll share with you that the size of this cabin is about 1,200 square feet uh, with the addition that we put on. So it's not a huge place, uh, but we do get very cold winters here. Uh, as I said, we're in Northern Ontario, Canada, so we're heating for like six months of the year at least. And a lot of the time, uh, we're looking at temperatures in, uh, in the you know, minus 20 to 30 Celsius range. I can't think on my feet quick enough to convert that to Fahrenheit, so sorry for all you American folks, but it's cold. It's cold, we get a lot of snow, a lot of ice, and it's cold for a long time here. So with that in mind, uh, we go through about 90 bags a winter, so just under two tons, two tons worth of Blashack brand anthracite coal per winter. And we have the, the dealership status here. We kind of took the unusual step, as I explained, of, of getting the dealership status and, and you know buying like 10 grand worth of coal at once so that we could get a cheaper rate per ton. So with that in mind, uh, it costs us at today's prices about $700 per winter, US. Now with shipping, I guess we do have to include shipping in that to be fair and divide it out per winter. So probably uh, as a guess, I'd say eight to $900 US per winter is what it costs us to heat our place here with, as I said, pretty extreme winters. And yeah, there may be some cheaper options out there when you don't have to ship your fuel as far. The shipping adds a lot. But for us here, I'm convinced anthracite coal is the most economical way to heat, even more economical than firewood. Firewood prices have gone up a lot where I am, uh, partially because of a shortage of good hardwood trees to harvest. But, but like I said, I think everything's gone up energy wise and heating wise. So, so that's what it would cost us roughly per winter. Uh, when you include shipping at today's prices for anthracite coal, Blashack brand specifically, looking at eight to 900 US per winter, per harsh Canadian winter. And I can live with that. I'm happy with that, that sort of price myself. So uh, where to get coal? Another question I get all the time. Well, in the US, it's pretty easy to find it. Uh, there's a lot of dealers around the country, and uh, the best place to find the one nearest to you is to go to the Blashack Coal website. I'll put it on the screen here, uh, and I'll also put a link to it in the description. So just look through that and find out which dealer is closest to you, and there's a number of dealers scattered across the U.S., so you shouldn't have any trouble finding one. And then, once again, there is always the option of becoming a dealer yourself, too, and arranging your own shipping if you're willing to put up a lot of capital up front and you know maybe sell that coal yourself if Blashack deems that there's too few dealers in, in your area and they say that it makes sense for you to become one and they agree, then that could be an option for you as well, which is what we did. So finding a dealer uh, in the US, that's your first step and there are a number to choose from. Uh, worldwide, uh, to be honest, I don't really know. Uh, I just don't know enough about what the options are for getting anthracite in other parts of the world. I know I've had people asking me from Australia and other places. And to be frank with you, I don't even know if uh, burning anthracite coal is legal in all of those countries. I know that's sort of frowned upon nowadays and that's a whole other topic. But, um, but I do know it's readily available in, in the UK. Um, I don't know about other countries, so uh, sorry about that. I guess you'll have to do your own research and ask around. But 
In the US, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to find. And in Canada, it's harder to find because we have very few dealers, but it's still possible to get it here. And I'm the proof of that. So um, how much coal do I burn per winter? I've already answered that one. Uh, about 90 to 95 bags a winter, which is just under two tons to uh, 2,000 pound tons of of coal a winter on average. And of course, winters vary in length and intensity, so there's a little fluctuation, but, but not a whole lot. For the last few years, it's been pretty consistent in the 90 bag per winter range. Uh, what kind of stove do I burn coal with? Well, I've answered that in other videos um, about this stove and going into a lot of depth about it. I'll link to those in the description as well, but just briefly, uh, this stove is called the Chubby Anthracite Burning Stove. Uh, it's made, uh, manufactured, and designed by a guy named Larry Trainer, and he's a very knowledgeable, very, uh, very intelligent and kind man who's been making these stoves for like 40 years, and he's really refined the design down to an absolute science. It's a wonderful stove. It served me really well zero complaints, zero issues. It burns the coal efficiently and cleanly. And so this is the stove we use. It says right on it here, coal chubby. I'll put uh, Mr. Trainer's website in the description as well, um, a, a link to the chubby stove website. And um, if you are thinking of making the switch to heating your home with anthracite, then I can't recommend this particular stove enough. You certainly won't be disappointed. And if you have a, an anthracite coal dealer close by, uh, then this stove will certainly serve you well for many, many years. I have no doubt of that. So that's my, uh, my recommendation for this video based on our years of experience with this. Uh, what size is your house? Um, okay, we've already covered that, about 1,200 square feet. So we're heating that 1,200 square foot cabin in a Canadian winter. Um, already covered this, but 90 bags a year, give or take. Can you burn anthracite coal in a wood stove? Again, this is a question I get really often, uh, and the short answer is no. No, you cannot burn anthracite coal in your existing wood stove. And the reason is that a coal burning stove is different in its design than a wood stove because coal needs very specific conditions to burn. Anthracite coal especially needs very particular conditions. It's a bit of a, of a finicky fuel until you get used to it. And then it burns easily and you can keep it burning all winter if you want. But it needs uh, pretty particular narrow conditions in order to burn well and to stay burning all winter. So coal stoves designed to burn anthracite, like this one, they've actually got a, uh, a rotating shaker grate inside. And I don't know if you can see it from here. I've covered this in other videos, as I said, but there's a rotating grate down there at the bottom that supports the coal. And there's a space underneath it where the ash from that coal falls down and you shake it down twice a day so that the coal doesn't get clogged up with ash and go out, which is a, a real danger with burning coal. That's why you need to keep it from getting ash bound. So it needs that airspace and it needs that, that rotating grate to shake that ash loose. And, um, and it needs a certain shape and orientation of burn chamber as well and a certain, uh, a certain shape and position of of dampers and then it needs a barometric damper in the stovepipe itself the, the indoor portion of the stovepipe which obviously we don't have here right now it's outside being cleaned but all these things are, are very particular and without any one of them you won't be able to to burn anthracite coal so no you can't just shovel some coal into your wood stove and expect it to burn unfortunately you do need a dedicated coal burning stove, which actually uh, leads me to the next question, which is kind of the, the flip side of that, that previous question. Can you burn wood in a coal stove? And the answer to that is yes. Um, I know that because I do it every year. The thing about anthracite coal is that it packs quite a punch in terms of BTUs of output. It, it gives a lot of heat, more heat, considerably more heat than even the best seasoned hardwood. 
So for that reason, we don't like to start each heating season in the fall and finish each heating season in the spring with anthracite because it gives too much heat. We'd end up opening the windows in fall and spring and wasting some of that heat. Uh, wood, on the other hand, gives less heat. So we actually burn wood for the first part of the heating season and the last part of the heating season in this stove here. You, uh, you, know, you arrange the dampers a little differently when you're burning wood compared to coal, and you have to cut your wood pretty small to fit into this cylindrical burn chamber. I have some firewood stacked outside. It's, uh, it's cut to 16 inch lengths uh, from back when I was burning wood in a regular wood stove. Um, and I have to cut those 16 inch lengths in half to eight inch blocks to burn in this, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's not so bad. I keep a, a battery powered uh, portable chop saw outside by the wood pile at this time of year for that exact purpose. And uh, yeah, it, it has never given any trouble burning hardwood in this stove. And then when the time comes, we just make the switch over to coal when it gets cold enough and uh, there's never any issue with that either. There's never any issue with switching and there's never any issue with burning wood in this stove for as long as we want to until it's time to start burning coal. Now, I can't speak for other stoves, of course. This is the chubby anthracite burning stove. I know it works with that because I've been doing it for years, but as far as other brands of stove, um, I can't comment on that with, with authority without having experienced it for myself. But for this one, it works. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do you do with anthracite coal ash? Great question. I've probably gotten it and answered it <laughs> several dozen times, at least, in the comments section of previous videos. And the answer is you can do just about anything you want with anthracite coal ash. You can sprinkle it on your garden. I know of old timers who have burned anthracite for years and, and have done that for years with their their ash and they have like the best vegetables you can imagine. So it helps the soil. What I like to do with it sometimes is uh, to patch potholes in our driveway in the spring. We have a gravel driveway here leading into our cabin in the woods. And in spring, there's a lot of runoff from the snow melting and there's a lot of potholes and filling those up with, with anthracite ash. It packs down really nice and it's just a good material for, for patching those holes. And uh, a lot of people also use it for like an anti-slip coating at, at wintry times of year when you have ice on your steps or on your walkway outside your house, just sprinkle some of that ash on. And it's got like little bits of chunks in it as well as finer powdery ash. So it has an abrasive like grip to it and you won't, um, you'll be a lot less likely to, to slip. And it's certainly better for um, the ground than, you know, putting a bunch of salt on there or something. I know that in the town where um, where Blashack coal is harvested, is mined from the ground and processed, uh, that whole municipality, and I, may, I think it's actually a city, I've never been there, but in, in Pennsylvania, it, um, you know, the, the town officials sprinkle like huge quantities of anthracite ash over the roads in town. Like they collect it in you know, massive containers of some sort and they sprinkle it over the roads there because it's such a good like anti-slipping thing, even for vehicles, not to mention on foot. So put it in your garden, sprinkle it on your, uh, on your slippery areas outside your house or uh, you know, patch potholes in your driveway with it. You can do a lot of things and put that anthracite coal ash to good use. Uh, some people seem to think that it's like poisonous or highly radioactive. It's not. You know, I know of people who have been doing this all of these things, these uses for coal ash for years and never had any health issues or anything like that. So, you know, don't, don't buy into the fear mongering. There's too much fear mongering in the world right now. And uh, a lot of it seems to center around burning anthracite coal, but uh, you don't need to be burdened by that, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> how to light an anthracite stove. Well, that's kind of a big topic, uh, too much to get into here in this video, and I can't demonstrate it, of course, because I don't have my stove pipe on, but I have done a very detailed video in the past on exactly how to light an anthracite coal stove start to finish. So I'll link to that in the description. This description box on this video is gonna have a lot of links, but hopefully you find them all useful. Isn't coal illegal? 
Well, not yet, not in, uh, not in Canada and not in the U.S. And uh, there are certain powers that be that I'm sure would like it to be, but uh, hopefully, God willing, freedom will win out and uh, we'll continue to get to burn this, uh, this great and very economical source of, of natural fuel to heat our homes. Um, doesn't, uh, doesn't burning coal and mining coal cause pollution? Well, that's kind of a, a big question to answer here, but just briefly, as far as the mining goes, I know that, uh, that Blashack Coal, the, the, the company that makes the coal that we've burned here for years in Pennsylvania, they have some very sustainable mining practices where they're like, making use of already mined sites, uh, very environmentally conscious. They're taking old mines and, and uh, sealing them up and adding soil and planting trees and like letting nature reclaim them in a, in a very, uh, very uh, environmentally healthy way. Um, as far as the pollution from burning this stuff, um, you know, just about everything you burn is going to put carbon into the atmosphere. In fact, not just about everything you burn is going to release carbon. And I guess the question really comes down to you know, whether or not that fact is as uh, damaging as a lot of mainstream folks and uh, news media seem to say it is. And I'm not going to get into that whole debate here, except to say that uh, I don't think it is nearly as harmful as the powers that be say it is to burn coal or burn wood or, or uh, you know, burn natural gas to heat your home. I think there's a lot of good reasons to think that that's not the massive earth shattering problem that a lot of people think and a lot of unfortunately fearful folks have bought into thinking. But enough on that for now. Um, that brings me to the end of my list of what I have been asked about burning anthracite coal, which is what we have used for the last three years to heat our cabin in the woods here in this stove. So hopefully you found this video interesting and helpful. It's been a bit long winded. Hopefully you're not bored. I guess if you've watched to this point, you must have found it somewhat interesting. So uh, if you liked it, please give the video a like, share it with your family and friends, and subscribe to the Cabin in the Woods channel for more great videos about burning anthracite and other life in the woods, kind of semi-off-grid type of topics. And if you have any other questions about burning coal or anything else about our lifestyle here in the woods, feel free to ask. Um, you know, hit me up in the comments section and I'll see if I can cover any further questions in an upcoming video. Thanks very much for watching.